I'm Nina Parker. My occupation is several things. <laughs> a television host, a television producer, fashion designer, actress, a journalist. So I wear a lot of hats. Today is a design day, so I usually fly into New York. Um, I, I kind of curate ideas based off of just things I want to wear, or I may see someone in the street with a really good style and ask them if I can take their picture. And like, I just get inspired in many different ways. Sometimes the, I'm inspired by things that are on trend that just, I feel like they don't make in plus size. Um, like this bomber jacket is my collection and I just felt like I couldn't find just a basic bomber jacket to wear with, you know, cargo pants or whatever. I felt like I couldn't find that. That was a comfortable fit. So sometimes it's out of necessity and then sometimes it's just a really cute trend that I never really understood like why they would stop making something at a certain size. It didn't make any sense to me. So today is just a big design day and then I'm also gonna have a fit session with our fit model who um, we personally picked out the fit model for all of the clothes. So it's just a little bit mix of both. We'll have like a two hour fit session um, and that's really where we go over the fit of the clothes which I think is the, the special sauce of the line. What would you say your big break moment was in your career? I would say getting hired at TMZ. You know, aside from moving to LA and kind of just moving to, moving to LA with a couple hundred dollars and, <laughs> you know, living in my, my car and finding like a little room to rent. Um, I would say getting hired at TMZ was probably my biggest break because it was a national TV show. Um, but before it was even a show, it was just a website, which I got hired when it was just a website. And I had no idea that it would change the world, that that way of journalism and photojournalism would change the world. And I didn't know that I would be a part of breaking some of the most iconic stories in the world in history. And so I, you know, being a part of that was, was life changing. What are some of the most memorable stories that you helped break and some of the biggest stories that you helped to break? So, I mean, a couple of, a couple of them stick out to me. The death of Bernie Mac st sticks out to me because I remember I was working, I think, by myself that day because it was a weekend. And I remember having to like call and report and get information on that. But the biggest story that I, I've ever been a part of is the death of Michael Jackson, breaking the story that Michael Jackson died and being a part of that, being in the newsroom when we found out um, before it was even on, you know printed and before it went online. Um, and being really, I just remember being really scared for us to publish it because I was just so afraid that even though we had checked our sources, multiple sources, I was so afraid we were gonna be wrong. Um, and I, I don't think I've ever been a part of anything since that was just, I think we slept in the newsroom for three days. So being a part of that was just a different, it just kind of activated a different kind of hustle that I had never been a part of. And it changed the way that I worked. And to this day, I, I can, I, I, there's just, you know, I think Will Smith said something like, you know, a lot of people might be more talented, but they're not gonna outwork me. That's how I feel. Like I can work forever. Uh, I feel like I've been a part of a boot camp, And so it's just, now it's like my DNA. That's cute. Yeah. yeah that's even with the bigger breast. Yeah. It's so good to know. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's cute. With like the sneakers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's very Beyonce. Yeah. Yes. So putting my outfits together for one, when you get on a show, and I would say like when you get on a show that it has a budget, because not every show has a budget. When you finally get on a show that has a budget, they're gonna give you hair and makeup, they're gonna give you that team, they're gonna ask you who you want, and they're gonna give you a wardrobe person. What I was finding is that I would get these shows and I would find stylists who had no idea how to style a plus woman. So you know how like there are a lot of people who complain like when they don't know how to do black hair on set, people also don't know how to style a plus size woman. And you would come and I'd get these racks and it would just be clothes that you know, my grandma would wear. And I was like, what, what is this? I don't dress like this. This is not like reflective. And they would be like, well, this is all they had. Or we tried to pull sizes, but the only sample sizes are a four. So can you imagine wanting to feel confident on camera and then there's no clothes for you? You're like devastated. Do 
No. Oh. <laughs> you guys are looking. Tired. Yeah, this is like a real. You guys are bringing good luck because this it, this is a this is a good fit meeting. Sometimes it's like we'll do something and fit it like ten times before we feel like the fit is good. But this is like I don't know what y'all was doing before I got here. But but a lot, but we have like a I think now they kind of know what I like and so it's easy to like they'll do their own before I come in. So then it's like I think they know what I like, so it's easier, like yeah. the growing pains are kind of done. Unless it's a new design. But some of this, like that dress we've done in a couple of other styles, so okay. it's, it's easy. The inspiration behind the collection honestly came out of frustration. I kind of, you know, I'm a plus size woman on camera, and you get a lot of flack for that because people feel like we've been fed one image of what people on camera are supposed to look like. And we've been fed that our whole lives. So when they see somebody that like looks like their cousin or their friend, it's like they can't understand it. It doesn't resonate with them. Even though there are people in your life who look like me every day, you see me in this position on camera, all of a sudden you feel like maybe I don't deserve it. You know, I would get people telling me, you need to lose weight, you need to do this. And it really, in my early in my career, really weighed on me because I liked who I was, you know? And I mean, we always want to be better versions of ourselves, but I was just critiqued really heavily and it wasn't even about the work that I was doing. It was just, you know, what I looked like. But also what I decided was that there were other people who looked like me. And I decided that every time there was a, a, a kind of like a rush of negativity, I was gonna make money on it. I was like, every time there's a buzz about me in a negative way, I'm gonna find a way to get a coin. And I started to think about a clothing line for plus women who were struggling like I was to find jackets that fit right, to find, you know, fashionable items that they could wear casually or dressed up and who were just struggling with these basic items for whatever reason, these lines, these clothing lines didn't want to make. And that's really what sparked the idea was that I was putting clothes together on camera and people would message me and DM me and say, where'd you get this top? Where'd you get those shoes? How did you find these, find these white leg calves? How did you get these pants that were long enough? I would start getting all of these questions, which made me start putting more outfits together. And there was just a, a true buzz from other women to just kind of want to know where I got my bras from, where I got my shirts from. And that's really what sparked the idea that maybe there was something there that I could be serving other women, not only with what I was saying on camera, but also in other ways. That's kind of why we do the design day. Um, and we, we do, you know, we try to do that. I think like one, more like once a month, I'll come to New York and I'm usually here a week out of each month. Um, and we'll go through tons of fabrics. So today, like we'll go through fabrics. I gotta feel them, see what the stretch is like. Um, and then usually we'll collaborate with Macy's to see like what color palette they're working on because in fashion, you know, they'll have like fall colors, fall trends. And so Macy's will usually have like a palette that they're working with. And we try to kind of stick in that family. It doesn't have to be exact, but we'll say, okay, for fall of 2024, green is gonna be a really big color. What can we do in green? So like I'm doing a lot of green for fall of 2023 because last year that was what they said that was coming out. So we'll kind of work within those palettes um, and then just kind of create our own thing. Every Everything that I do for the line is my idea, it's my design, um, you know, and some of it's basic, like, you know, wanting to just be able to have a bomber jacket, like, that's not groundbreaking, but you'd be surprised that it's not available. And for me, the fit was the most important thing because what a lot of people don't understand is those lines that are saying they have plus will have a smaller plus size fit model. So you'll have this fit model who's a size zero and they just scale it up. So when you put the clothes on, it doesn't fit you the right way. I have a model that's a plus size fit model who specifically is designed so that the clothes sit right. Because the fit, what a lot of people don't understand is style is important, but the fit is what makes the clothes. You can open it and just wear it. I almost wore it, but it was hard to pack. It's so it, was, it took up half of my And then it has like <laughs> the side pockets. This was easier because it was so soft. Yeah, so I was like, like, I can't wear it. Over oh, the knees. Yeah. And then we are nice open. little pink belt. It's mm -hmm. so the way. Just pack and go. You have to make like five outfits yeah. from this. This is, I, love I like to try to do things that you, could, we can, like, you can wear it multiple ways. Mm -hmm. And all year round. Yeah. And then sometimes I just steal yeah. Hilda's ideas because she'll wear something cute. And I'll be like, we should make that. <laughs> Do you find more inspiration coming into New York to do this or do you get inspiration everywhere? Everywhere. 
because I travel everywhere, so it's kind of, you know, it's everywhere, it's TV. It's like I could be watching something from five years ago and see something I love. There there was this old like ebony catalog that had like 70s fashion that inspired um, this like poochie outfit that I had last year. So it, it just really is, it's all over. I'm watching people, I'm very much a people watcher, but it's like TV, inspirations from music videos, Instagram, like it's, it's really a collective of just ideas everywhere. Getting the New Parker collection off the ground was a year long process of working through the pandemic. I think I connected with my business partner in uh, December of 2019. And I will say the interest in landing the clothing line at major retailers was actually larger than I anticipated. I didn't think anybody wanted it, would want to carry it because I wasn't, I'm just kind of used to reporting on these like A-list celebs. So I'm like, you know, I'm not Beyonce. So I'm like, who's going to care? And my business partner, Hilda, was like, people are going to care, you know? And so she was like, I'm going to, I'm going to pitch Macy's. And I was like, oh no, girl, like th that's too, that's like, can we, let's start with like a pop-up. And she, she said to me, it's something that I'll, I'll keep with me forever. She said, it would be their pleasure. It's really cool to see things come to life. You can see like it's been fit. So there's, it's still in pro progress, but this was just kind of like my idea to have words of affirmation on a suit. So you'll see it says like, bless queen, boss slay love and it's just kind of all on the outfit i just haven't really seen like this kind of stuff for plus girlies and i feel like when you get a plus suit it fits they have a kind of like a mannish fit to it um and so the fit is really important to me but also just like fun stuff to wear like who there's basics you can find basics anywhere but like the plus girlies can dress too so just giving you some options and you could do this like with i will probably you know dress it down with like maybe some ripped jeans and a bralette underneath, but just some really fun items for the plus girls, you know? But you know what's actually really cool is I've gotten DMs from husbands, not those kind of DMs, but like, <laughs> like the DMs from husbands who say like, my wife just had a baby, she gained weight, I think she's beautiful, but she feels so insecure about her body right now. And I bought her one of your dresses or outfits and this is the first time she would go on date night with me. Thank you so much for helping give my wife confidence to feel pretty. Because I think when you're trying to be, fit your old clothes, it can be such a frustrating experience. And you're just sitting there like, I can't fit anything. And so you have something that just slides on nicely. You feel so good about yourself. And I think, you know, to have somebody come up to me or a husband say like, thank you for, for making my wife feel pretty on date night. Um, you know, I had a husband say, you're going to be the reason for baby number two because she looks so good in this dress. Or, you know, I've been in stores sometimes where I'll go and check on the line and I'll have women come up to me. I had a woman come up to me in New York and just start crying. And, you know, her man was with her and he was like, I love her any size, but like she feels so good in these clothes. And it just really gave me a new sense of purpose. Yeah. So we do like a secret button for women who are busty. Like a lot of times on a plus girl, you'll see buttons and it's open, open, open. So we do these secret buttons. Your passion and your love for what you do is, is what's gonna fuel you and keep you going. And, and that's really important to have. If you don't have it, or if you're doing something just to get you somewhere else, my thing is like, if people wanna do a career, but just to take them somewhere else, just start at the other place. Like you don't need, you know what I mean? Like just start where you really wanna be. Don't, don't use a segue, um, go for it. So these are my gifting cards. So when I send out gifting to influencers or celebs, and sometimes we gift also to people, um, regular folks who want clothes. So we send out these gifting cards as always a note for me. And one, one of the fun things that I love that we do is we pick a pattern of the design, one of the current designs that we have out. So this gifting card is based off of this outfit. So this is a wide leg, high-waisted pant with matching jacket, with a matching bomber jacket. One of my faves right now. If you can tell us, what are some <laughs> of those other themes and other ways that you tap into your creativity? I can't tell you yet. <laughs> I am very much a like, you probably won't know about it until it's completed type of person. I've never been like the type of person to like take a picture 
in front of a building, a network and be like, coming soon. Like, I just, I just really want to focus on the project before the promotion. I think like, if you have to consistently always tell people what you're working on to feel valued, if it goes away, does the confidence and the, the love that you have for it go away too? Like if you do it and only one person appreciates it, is that okay for you? So I think for me, it's always important to only talk about something when it's really done. Um, because then, then to me, that's the celebration part. Um, but I'm not celebrating anything until I've completed the task. See, the question of like making it is so relative because I feel like I haven't made it yet. <laughs> Like, I, there's just so much that I want to do. But I think that's what keeps my hustle strong is that I've never felt like I could get comfortable. You know, I mean, I, I just always want to do something else. I'm always thinking of something else. I'm thinking of like 2025 right now. So for me, you know, I'm good. I'm comfortable. I'm happy. But there's just so much that I want to do that I'm like, it's not time to stop yet. It's not time to, you know, I'm not laying, I'm not laying my swords down anytime soon. I'm not like ready for battle. I'm ready for whatever. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep creating. I'm going to keep doing new things. I'm going to continue to do things that challenge me. I don't ever want to get so comfortable where I feel like I've conquered everything. I feel like once you can stand still and say, well, I've done everything I want to do, um, you know, that's when life starts to get really boring. To know that so many people told me in the beginning that if you name this brand Actively Black, then it can't be successful, that drives me every day. Like, I can't stop. Oh my God, I'm just playing with them now, yeah. Everyone wants success, but success doesn't get handed to us without putting in the work. I don't ever want my kids to have to be inspired by somebody else because mommy didn't inspire them. This is how you grow your brand, where roadblocks lead to doubts, so can you imagine wanting to feel confident on camera and then there's no clothes for you? But for those that pick themselves up time and time again, failure is no option. I can't compete with the research and development. I can't compete on the marketing dollars, but can none of them out black, actively black. Roommates, follow these entrepreneurs on their journey to success so you can find yours on the Shade Rooms Never Stop. Oh my God, I'm just playing with them now, yeah. Oh my God.